Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun and coming at you again with another user form keyboard shortcut trick that you can use. So we have a little series going on here. Uh, originally we started off talking about how you can use alt key combinations, hit the escape key to close out your user form. We even learned how to use um, some hidden keyboard shortcuts with hidden controls, hidden buttons, option buttons, things like that. And in this one, we're actually going to talk about going beyond the scope of a simple alt key combination because most people don't, their thumbs just don't go that way. They don't press the alt key with another thing. Most users don't like that. But they are accustomed to using the control or the shift or just simple uh, regular keyboard uh, combinations. So we're going to create our own shortcuts. It's a little bit of a workaround to make it a little easier for you. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to hit Alt F11 on a Windows computer. Unfortunately, if you're a Mac user, user forms are not very easy to do to design without uh, using parallels or boot camp or some kind of virtualization of Windows. Almost everything else works the same, but for some reason, user forms. Blech. So anyway, Alt F11. Let's go ahead and get into the Visual Basic Editor. So here we are. And we're going to go ahead and create a new user form. You can click the drop down and go to user form. And that's going to show up as user form 3 now. The reason we're going to use a new one is this one's getting a little cluttered and there's just a lot going on here. So we're going to have two forms that we're going to use. This one is user form 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a simple command button on there. Now we want to trigger this user form using control plus M. So control M. That was the original question that spawned this entire series. So we're going to just going to say the word run on this button. And now what I want to do is if this is has the focus, then that is going to receive the event, which is called the key press or the key down event. So we're going to go ahead and double click on the button. I double click on it and it took the name and it's showing the click event for that button with that name. I don't want the click event, I want to do something more fun. So we're going to do the key up uh, or the key down or key press. We're going to do the key up. So whenever they are releasing the keys, that is committing to that keyboard combination. So the key up, let's try this. So we have the key code which is what Excel or your Windows computer interprets is the key or the multiple keys that you have pressed and then the shift uh, parameter is actually it's a combination of control shift and or the alt key so control shift or alt uh, and any combination of those will result in a different number for the shift parameter. We're going to focus on key code for now. So let's get started. I'm going to put the word stop in here. The reason I put the word stop is I'm putting a manual breakpoint in there to actually pause everything so we can hover and see what key was pressed. So let's see. I don't know if this, I think this button does have focus when we run or hit F5. So now that it has focus, I'm, if I hit the letter D, D for Dan, I'm going to hit the letter D, and you notice that the Visual Basic Editor brought up this event right here, and it's paused right here at this line. That means it has triggered the key up. We keyed up or released the key of one of these keys. So let's see what key we press. We The key code for the letter D apparently is 68. Now, is shift equal to anything? No. Shift is empty. It's a zero. So that means we did not press alt or control or shift. Okay, so ignore the shift right now. But anyway, the key code is 68. So if we wanted D, which we don't, uh, let's go ahead and click the letter M. Okay, and the key code is 77. Shift is still zero. Let's let that run. If I hit Control M, okay, I've held, held the control with my pinky and pressed the letter M. Now the key code is still 77 for the letter M. However, if I hover over Shift, Instead of being zero empty, it's now showing two, which means control by itself is the number two. So it's very interesting. So shift needs to be two and key code needs to be 77. I'm going to make a note of that. Shift is two and let me hit the down arrow. Let's see. Key code is going to be equal to 77. This is just for my notes. If you don't have your immediate window open, uh, you can hit control G or go to view and go to immediate window to open that back up. This is kind of a scratch pad, has a lot of uses, but I'm just going to use it as a scratch pad right now. So on the most basic level, if you only had a few controls, you could say if uh, shift 
is 2, meaning control is pressed, and the key code it happens to be M or 77, which is the key code, then, so both of those things have to be true with the AND modifier there. So if those things are true, then, you know, uh, we'll tell it to uh, call a specific macro, my macro 1, you know, which we haven't written yet. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and close that down. Let's go into here and create a macro. So sub, which stands for sub procedure, we'll call this one my macro one. And inside of that, we're simply going to make that cell A1 equal to the text this has run. All right, it's a very basic macro, isn't it? In fact, we can test this out by hitting F8. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit F8. We're in the user form. Uh, excuse me. So we're, the only way we can really test this out efficiently is to go ahead and just run this through to completion. So we have to hit Control and M for this to work properly. So let's go ahead and run the user form. Now the button is what is highlighted or has the active focus, and that's the only reason this is working right now. Because if we had another control that had the focus, the key up would not work. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So I'm going to hit Control D and let's see 68 still 2. So if I hit the F8 key, Shift is 2 but key code is not 77. So I didn't hit Control M. It does not run my macro 1 and it ends. Okay, if I go back to the use form and I do hit Control M, now we're going to see that if I hit F8 a few times that shift is 2, but key code is equal to 77, which is means they're both true, which means now it's going to call my macro 1, which puts this has run in cell A1, as you can see uh, behind me there, which means it worked. So I'm going to close this down really quick. I'm going to clear out cell A1. In fact, I'll zoom in. I'm going to clear out cell A1, Alt F11. Let's run this again, and at full speed, oops, I'm going to take away the stop word. All right, this is part one of this, okay, because we want it to work on any and all controls. So I'll put a few text boxes and stuff like that. So let's hit Control M. There you go. This has run. So whatever you want to do, you could do a whole entire macro analysis, writing uh, reports, uh, running and opening another user form that has other set of reports or commands or data entry forms, whatever. You can do all those cool things, but it gets more complicated. So let's put some text boxes here. Text box one, text box two. In fact, I'm going to align these. So Alt O A T for top, and now they're aligned to the top. And we'll put this button right about here. So now it's going to get interesting. In fact, I'm going to put the tab index for this as zero. So that means whenever I run the user form, this is going to have the very first tab index of zero, and this will be one, and this will be two or something thereabouts. So that's the tab order I manually set. But what my point is, if I hit control M right now, it's not it's not doing anything. That's because I have to tab over this button in order for my macro to appropriately run. So that's a problem. That's our first problem. So what could we do? Well the if you only had a few controls, you could just uh, let me show you what I did. I'm gonna double click on this uh, text box and paste and then I'm going to double click on the other one and paste. Now, if you do this a lot and if you have a more complicated macro uh, to analyze these things, and especially if you ever wanted to add more considerations, more keyboard shortcuts to consider, then this is going to get real messy real fast. And you're going to have to go and scrub each and every macro and rewrite them every time you want to make any changes. That's not efficient. What is efficient is calling uh, a centralized macro that has uh, one time. It's only giving these uh, orders one time and everything else points to it and simply gives away uh, whether control was clicked or which key code it was. Alright, I'll show you what I mean. First of all, now I can click on any of these and hit control M and it works. You probably can't tell uh, because that already had those words. If I hit control M right now, Oh goodness. So I need to, I I can't use the change event. I meant to do the key up event for these and paste those. So the not the change event for these apologies. So we're going to text box 2, we're going to go to the key up event and paste. We're going to get rid of the text box 2 
text box to change event because we don't care what happens when they type in there or click around in there. All right, so if I hit Control M, bam, it, this is run. All right, so again, just telling you about the problem is that you don't want to do this like 800 times and then have to change each of and every one whenever you want to add a new consideration or a new keyboard combination. So the only solution that I can think of is we're going to create another macro that's going to handle this for us. So we're going to make another sub procedure. We're going to call this one. Um, we'll call this one key up handler, right? This is the key up handler, and we are going to go ahead and uh, give it these same parameters. In fact, I'm going to give it them identically. These are actually absolutely the same parameters. This is an MS forms dot return integer, and this is an integer. All this good stuff here. So what that means is, whatever we pass into key up handler, it's going to come directly from the key up from that control. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the text box number two key up event, rather than saying if then and call this and do whatever, I'm simply going to pass this to key up handler. So we're going to say key up handler. I'm going to hit uh, control spacebar to autocomplete. So we want to call the key up handler and my parameters are going to be the key code which came from this key up event comma and then the shift that I want to pass is actually the same spelling and everything is the shift that the key up event here has. Now since I don't have an equal sign and I'm not passing the uh, answer to that uh, I don't actually want these parentheses. I'm just going to say key up handler space and then here are the two parameters. So now I can get rid of this stuff here and what we want to do in our key up handler, I'm going to con control X, in our key up handler so it's passing on the key code and it's passing on the shift from the regular key up event and this is just uh, one centralized place to analyze that if then statement one time instead of many times. That way if you ever need to change it or you need to do an else if meaning uh, check out you know control D and maybe if it's control M uh, or if it's control something else or control shift X whatever you can have it handle those and all of the controls are going to have this handler. So I'm going to copy that and paste it into the text box one key up. So now text box two key up event has this handler and text box one has the handler and the command button one key up event has the handler that's going to run. So everything has the handler. So let me save our progress and what we're going to do now. Uh, let's see, I'm going to delete this from cell A1. And we're going to go ahead and run it again. But now I'm going to tab randomly. Let's go to text box 2. I'm going to hit control M. And the handler went ahead and ran it. Now if you want to stick around and see how uh, that worked in slow motion, I'm going to go ahead and show you in slow-mo really quickly. So on the key up handler uh, and on text box 2, I will put a breakpoint. That's this little guy right here. You can click on the line, hit F9. But for now, I'm just going to manually click on this gray line here. So uh, let's go ahead and open up our form. Now I'm going to tab over. Oop, I didn't want to catch the tab key. I do just want to go here. So control M. Now here's what happens. So the key code from the key up event, this which is built in, said 77. It said shift is 2, meaning the control key. So we know that those are those. But now the key up handler is going to receive these two inputs. So if I hit F8, now the key up handler is running and it has received uh, these inputs here. So now that we're up and running, it is acknowledged that the key code is 77, which was given to it, and the shift is 2, which is given to it. And if those are what we want them to be, then and only then we'll call the macro, which is then running there, which as you can see ran, and now it's done. And now the text box 2 key up gets to finally finish its final yellow line with F8 key. All right. And that is basically how to do that. And as I said, you can put the those key up events on any and all controls that you want to acknowledge your new handler. Okay. So if you have any questions, please uh, write them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notifications button. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and God bless.